Hey friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and I'm really excited, really pumped to share with you today a tutorial to set up Live Tracker with DMXs. And so, Live Tracker is a program for running elements uh, of a show live from stage, including, uh, you'll see in my tutorial, uh, multi track audio, which is a big deal uh, because it's simple and there's not a lot of other really simple programs that can do multi track audio. Um, as well as MIDI and video. Again, not a lot that can do video and multi-track audio and work so simply. And Live Tracker can also output MIDI, which they then advertise as uh, being lighting control. Of course, you could use it for other things too. But then, of course, one of my favorite programs uh, for people who are beginning with lighting is DMXs. And DMXs is just so great because it's simple to be able to lay out all of your lights. And I've got a lot of tutorials on it here on the channel. We'll link to some here. And you're able to just lay out your lights and then begin building different presets. Boom. And then trigger those via MIDI or via a foot pedal. So you don't have to use the tracks. You don't have to use it for every song. But for those you do, you can use the MIDI control. And for others, you could actually use the foot pedal that you can just plug into the DMX's box. All right. So with that said, how do we connect Live Tracker in DMX's? One of the things you guys will know if you've watched my review of Live Tracker is I wish that there was a MIDI editor in Live Tracker. For now, there's not. So we're going to launch a program called Reaper, which is free to evaluate. But if you are going to use it, you're able to, to go ahead and upgrade that software. The pricing for Reaper is still actually is really reasonable, um, especially for non-commercial use. But even for commercial use, it's really good. There are other programs that can do this. Um, but I just used Reaper. I went onto YouTube and I found a video on how to create a MIDI track. And the basic gist of it is going in, and I'll, I'll link to the video here actually, and creating a track and then setting up a virtual MIDI keyboard input on MIDI. Then I went in and I basically recorded into here, we can see by double clicking all my MIDI notes, um, my channel 15 and channel 16 notes. Now in DMXS, if we look here, the banks are channel 15 and the presets are channel 16. And so right here, we start with channel 16 uh, note one and that's going to bring in basically whatever bank we're on the um, first note then we double check and just hit that bank make sure we're in the right bank we were I should probably flip those um, so that the bank happens first then we go just down the notes and around and around through some different looks and so that's the setup of the MIDI item in Reaper that I literally just pressed record, had that MIDI set up again. We'll make sure we have that video in here as to how to do that. You know, pressing these keys and recording them. Then I went ahead and I exported by file export project MIDI, my MIDI test file. Okay. After I did that, I went over to Live Tracker, and this is where this is where it gets good. All right. So I'm not going to save. We went over to Live Tracker. And we're going to go ahead and I'll delete my old MIDI track, actually. Just going to delete that here. Then I do a MIDI track, press OK. A uh, MIDI, of course, in Live Tracker could run your effects pedals and stuff too. And I'm going to go in here. I'm not in Ableton this time, but rather in my Live Tracker folder, I believe. Yep. And I believe it's this one that I was going with. Boom, and then we can see in our sequencer view too, if we needed to, we could drag around where the MIDI was in the song. Um, can do that here. You can, you are able to adjust things a certain amount. We are able, yeah, if we zoom in, we can, we can move it around. Um, but I'm just gonna start it at the start. Then, very important, we're gonna go to preferences and we are going to go to MIDI. Uh, MIDI input doesn't matter. But MIDI output, I'm going to put to my loop MIDI port. Now you might say, David, I don't have a loop MIDI port. Well, as long as we're on the same computer for the tracks and DMXs, we need to connect the two with a virtual MIDI cable. How do we do that? This program called Loop MIDI, totally free. We'll link to it below. You can download, create a new port, and then that just loops back the MIDI between different programs. Really simple. So... Once we've selected that, you'll launch Loop MIDI before you launch Live Tracker, as well as before you launch DMXs. We'll then save changes and go back. 
We'll go over to DM Access. Go to the preferences here. If you had it enabled, if you had Loop MIDI up and running before you launch DM Access, it should be active. But if not, you can activate it. Perfect. And then we're good to go. So at that point, we can literally go ahead and um, they do want you to re-rack the song. So I'll just click off of it and click onto the next one again. That's just something when you've made changes that it likes for you to do. Then we'll hit play in Live Tracker. And we will listen. So I think I double tapped it there. Yep. We will watch and we see our lighting presets change here. In fact, we can go, we can see different presets just changing. I'll restart it, re-rack it back to the start. We'll show you from the faders view just so you see. Okay, this is actually, actually firing different presets. You see things fading in, things fading out, lights going to the music, etc. And so that's the basic gist. That's what I really like about Live Tracker is, yeah, for the meantime, I have to bring in a third-party program to get that MIDI file and to program my lights to it. But at the end of the day, once you get it set up and you get your different MIDI events for when you want to fire your lighting, when you get those all in the right places, then you can always edit your light show and, and change the way scenes look and stuff from DMXs directly. And it's also worth noting that I use DMXs as an example here, and DMXs is a great example. But we could also do this in Onyx. We could do this in Deep Row, in LightKey. Um, we'd have to send it to the Mac over MIDI, but you could run Live Tracker on a Mac too. Um, and use a program like Loop Mini, or you might be able to do it with the built-in stuff on the Mac. So the point is, the cool thing about a Live Tracker not having a lighting control built into it, but using MIDI to add it to fire that lighting control means that it's useful and and very useful with any lighting program out there that supports MIDI, which is a lot of them, most of the good ones. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A little different from what I normally did. Not a lot about lighting, but it should give you an idea of how to really get rolling with a great program like Live Tracker and connect that with DMXs. Now, if you are looking to buy Live Tracker, check out my link below. You can get 5% off, and they do give me a small commission if you do buy through them. That's not a pressure thing, but if you check it out, you know, you can download the demo version for free, which can do a lot. It's just restricted to a few songs. And if you do like it, buy it through my link. Uh, you'll get 5% off again with my discount code, and it'll just help me to create more great stuff for you. Awesome. I hope you're having a great day. Be sure to subscribe here, and I'll see you on our next video. Thanks.